So we have looked at proteins. We have also looked at carbohydrates. And if there are three macronutrients, which one is remaining? Awesome. Welcome back to Ferris Tutorials. And in today's episode, we'll be looking at part one of fats in the diet. Stay tuned. Food, nutrition, and health. We're looking at section two, which is entitled Nutrition and Health. And for today's session, we're continuing with content four, where we'll look at fats in the diet. And we're looking at part one. Now, let us look at this episode's focus points. So we'll be looking at the structure of chemical composition of fats, which is triglycerides, the difference between fats and oils, cholesterol, fatty acids, and also the classification of fatty acids. First up, we're looking at the structure of chemical composition of fats. Now, based on this diagram, let us see what we're seeing in this diagram. We're seeing some uh, kinked lines. So we're seeing some zigzag or we may say kinked lines. We're also seeing some letters. And these letters represent certain elements. We're also seeing three fatty acids plus glycerol. Can you tell? Can you describe the chemical structure of fats? Can you tell the meaning of the, the, what these letters represent? Which elements? All right, hold that thought and let us see if you are indeed correct. Now, triglyceride is a major form of fat stored by the body. A triglyceride is derived from a glycerol and three fatty acids, right? And that was what was being displayed in the previous picture. Now, triglycerides are the main constituents of body fat in humans and animals, as well as vegetable fat. Now, the formula for triglyceride is C55, H98, and O6. Now, C stands for carbon, H stands for hydrogen, and O stands for, you got that right, it stands for oxygen. Awesome job. Now, the word triglyceride reflects the fact that a triglyceride consists of three. As we say the word tri, which means three. So it consists of three molecules of fatty acids combined with a molecule of glycerol that serves as the backbone in many types of lipids. And another name for lipids, guys, is fat. Oh. Now, what you're viewing here is the chemical structure of fats. And that chemical structure we speak of is triglyceride. So what you're seeing here is three fatty acids plus a glyceroid that gives us triglycerides. And we're seeing the different elements. So we're seeing hydrogen, carbon, and also oxygen. Now, let us look at a quick checkpoint. What is triglyceride? What are the chemical elements that make up fats or the chemical elements that make up lipids? What is the formula for triglyceride? And based on what we've just discussed, you should be able to answer these questions. All right. Now we're moving on to the difference between fats and oils. Do you believe that there's a difference? Can you tell the difference? Now listen to this. We call the fats in our body fats, don't we? So we may look at ourselves and say, oh my God, I'm getting fat. But the oil on our faces, so we may look in the glass and we see our faces and we call those oils. Now, what's the difference between the two? Can you tell? And how do fats and oils change their state? Can you answer those questions? Let us find out together. All right. Now we're looking at the difference between fats and oils. Now the difference between fats and oils is their melting point. 
fat tends to be solid at room temperature. Example, lard, butter, shortening, right? Oils tend to be liquid at room temperature. Examples, vegetable oil, olive oils, and also corn oil, just to name a few, right? Now, in order for fat to melt, we have to apply heat. And examples of fat, as we've said before, are lard, butter, shortening. We may also say margarine. Quick checkpoint. Give two examples of fats and two examples of oils. What is the difference between fats and oils? All right, you should be able to answer. Let us proceed to our next subtopic. And we're looking at cholesterol. Now, what do you know about cholesterol? Based on this image that we're seeing on this on this on your screen, you're seeing uh, the blood. Uh, you're seeing some arteries, right? And uh, we're seeing some red blood cells going through, and all of a sudden, we're seeing a buildup, and that buildup is getting higher and higher until what? It stops the flow of blood. Can that tell us anything about cholesterol? Let us zoom in further to discover some more information on cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is a waxy fat-like compound. It is found only in food from animal sources and is made in the body. Now, we have LDL and we also have HDL. Now, LDL is stands for low density lipoprotein and those are the bad cholesterol those are bad for our health while on the other hand we have HDL which are high density lipoprotein and these are good cholesterol so remember we have good fats and we also have bad fats and later on in the session we'll look at the difference between the good fats and also the bad fats all right now guys, let us look at some facts about cholesterol. Cholesterol is very important in the body. It is a part of our brain and the nerves. It is a part of bile that helps to digest fats. It is a part of every cell in the body and it is used in the making of vitamin D and hormones. Good. Now remember, we, are, we have good fats and we also have bad fats. We have good cholesterol and we also have bad cholesterol. So the good cholesterol will be in charge of these functions, all right? Now let us look at some foods that are high in cholesterol. And if these foods are high, we should limit or stay away from these foods, right? So we may speak of beef brain, chicken liver, egg yolk, shrimps cheeseburger and also the chicken leg all right checkpoint explain your understanding of the term cholesterol give three importance of cholesterol and give three examples of cholesterol rich foods have you found this information useful don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also to turn on your post notification bell thank you for making it fairest tutorials you're awesome